Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. I may have mentioned in the last video that uh, we might be heading down to Blight Town in this video and maybe even fighting a boss down there, but I think I'm actually going to do a little bit of what could be considered a side quest, although it's not really a side quest in many ways, that because Dark Souls is so open world, uh, you can really do things in whatever order you want. Uh, this is not necessarily a mandatory part of what you would maybe call the main quest, if you're a fan of other RPG games, but it is something that does give us some important drops, and seems to be, you know, appropriate for our level. So what I'm going to do is head past the Titanite Demon, which is the uh, enemy that I fought in the last video, and then I'm going to head down into this forest area here, which is actually maybe against my better interests, um, because these... What would you call these guys? Thorny guys are actually kind of difficult right now. Uh, but Pyromancy should actually be... That's the ticket right there to take them out as quickly as possible. I'm hoping anyway. But of course I don't have a whole lot of Pyromancy. And they actually attack faster than I can throw it a lot of the time, which is a problem. But that's okay. This will be good. This will be a challenge for us. Which is of course exactly what we need after fighting Capra, right? The other thing is, by pillaging uh, their bodies, we usually get these purple moss clumps, or blood red moss clumps. And what those do, thankfully, is uh, actually reduce status on us. So in particular, I'll talk about the, uh, the blooming purple moss clump, which actually reduces poison on us. This is going to be unbelievably effective for us once we actually get to Blight Town. Okay, there's another one over here, just gotta pay attention to him. Now the reason I'm, I'm kinda maybe sounding a little bit nervous right now is because I normally don't do dark root forest, or dark root garden, I always forget the name, until uh, I get a little bit further on in the game. I usually do it, for people who are in the know when it comes to Dark Souls, I usually do it after uh, Anna Orlando, but for now I'm going to do it before Blight Town because I feel like it could be interesting. So anyway, as we move forward here, you'll see this door here. I'm not going to go through that door, but we can buy a key to get through that door uh, from Andre of Astora, the blacksmith. But what I am going to do, pop open this right here which will illuminate a bonfire for us. And I will actually reverse hollow here. So I will become human, and the forest is actually a pretty big hotbed for invaders. I'm hoping that uh, I don't get tagged by any, but you never know, it could happen. I'm gonna kindle the bonfire so that I get more uh, Estus flasks as well, so this will bring me up to 10. Normally if I rested at that bonfire I would have 8 because that's what I had last time. Um, or I could even get as low as uh, five, I believe. Okay, wait, one second. You know, I'm surprised that there's no messages here indicating that this is an illusory wall, so I'm gonna be a good guy, Greg. Take out my orange guy and soapstone and write down a message. I encourage you to do this if you're playing through the game, just so that other people, you know, can find secrets very easily. So I'm gonna put down illusory wall ahead. And then most people will know that when you strike this, then you'll get access to a bonfire, which is pretty nice. In addition to that, of course, um, I will get humanity if that message gets rated up, which is not necessarily likely, but could happen. So we're going to take the path on the right here and go through this fog wall. This is a scary area, which I don't want any part of right now. Try left. Okay, well, that's, that's good, I guess. And as we go through here, we're going to enter another part of the Darkroot Garden. And there's a lot of kind of difficult guys lying down on the ground there that I'm going to do my best to avoid for now. There's a couple of them that we can't avoid. But if I stick to the left here, I think we'll be okay. Well, actually, I've never gone through this path right here. What does he have? Oh, God, the tree! <laughs> oh, it's a lizard. Man, I did not see that coming. Oh, God, okay. Got to pay attention to my surroundings. Dark Souls 203. And remember, my uh, item discovery stat is pretty high right now because I do still have three active humanity. So uh, I do have a pretty high chance of picking up items when these guys drop things, which is good for me. Giant. Okay, that's true. These are giant stone golems, which I'm just trying to stay away from, essentially. Okay, that's going to be another lizard, so I want to stay the heck away from him. And pretty soon we should find ourselves inside the structure, and there will be a staircase that we can actually head up. Okay, we're going to have to fight this guy, unfortunately. Or you know what, maybe we don't. There's a summon sign over here. We, we might as well fight him. Oh god. This guy's gonna be a pain in the ass, but that's okay. We're doing 15 damage per hit. 
It's okay. Pretty soon we're going to get access to uh, better weapons. Or at least the ability to update or upgrade this weapon to a, a better weapon itself. Okay. This guy also uses some magic, which is a problem. But hopefully I can kill him before he does that. Nope. No, I can't. There's his magic right there. That's going to be a slow. Uh, but I don't think that affects my stamina regen. And he's dead anyway, so that's fine. Didn't drop anything. But there is a summon sign here. This will be to summon an NPC called Witch Beatrice. Who is actually extremely valuable for this fight. Plus, she looks pretty cool, even though her head is sticking through her hat right there. Okay, what happened? Oh, she came back. <laughs> Alright, there, they finally rendered in her hat. Thank God, I can't see her face anymore. And then we are going to go up here for a boss fight against an enemy called Moonlight Butterfly. But first, I want to actually change my equipment because I want a shield with very high magic resistance. So let's toggle our display here. 30%, 40% on the wooden shield. 35% on leather, 55% on the cracked round shield. Uh, yeah, let's take the cracked round shield then. This is one of the few opportunities that we'll actually have to use this shield where it's going to be viable. So we might as well go with it. Now, Witch Beatrice, apparently, I've never actually fought this uh, enemy with Witch Beatrice, but Witch Beatrice apparently makes this enemy a joke, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is just focus on it, and uh, I know it's attacks, but I can't really hit it from this range unless I use Pyromancy. Which Beatrice, shoot at the Moonlight Butterfly, please! Okay, that still did a little bit of damage, but with Estus, that should be fine. Apparently, Witch Beatrice feels like she should just not attack. And I might die. Use your Estus quickly, you big dummy. There we go. Okay, now Witch Beatrice has decided that she would like to attack, which is fine by me. And I'm just going to continue shielding and not doing a very good job of not getting murdered. Let's use some pyromancy. That does... Pro oh god, okay, now we can really get, go to town on it. But we have to get away as soon as it starts charging its attack. Otherwise, we'll die. Almost certainly. <laughs> Which, Beatrice, your spells are not hitting it. Okay, go, 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 get away! Okay, nearly dead. Which Beatrice seems to be doing okay. Only a few more attacks and it'll be done. There we go. Okay, thank you, Witch Beatrice. You did help me out a lot there. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't do too much, but I appreciate what you did nonetheless. So we did get a Humanity and the Soul of the Moonlight Butterfly for that, which is... Uh, uh, basically, boss souls are items that we can crunch up and actually eat them for souls, but uh, that's usually not the best way to do it. And the other thing that we could do with it is uh, create a special weapon. And I think for the Moonlight Butterfly, we can create a special shield with it, which is not necessarily something uh, that I can do right now, but maybe later. And honestly, I actually don't know where this leads to from here. So hopefully I won't get invaded, and we'll just come up here, see what's going on. Oh, I believe there's a... Oh, the Ember is up here. Right, that's the other reason that I wanted to do this boss fight before we progressed is that uh, there's another ember up here. You'll you recall in the depths in the last video, or two videos ago, that I got the uh, large ember. Oh, homeward bone, too, which is nice. The... Can I open this? No, read message. Need path. No, I'll just use the homeward bone, buddy. That's what they gave it to you for. Uh, I got the very... Or the large ember in the last video, and the large ember allowed us to ascend plus five weapons to plus six so that we could then modify them or reinforce them up to plus 10. The Divine Ember is going to allow us to take plus 5 weapons and turn them Divine. And Divine weapons, uh, when they kill an undead enemy that normally respawns, they don't respawn anymore. That's going to seem kind of nonsensical right now, but I promise you that later that comes in like serious, serious hand, uh, especially when you're going through an area called the Catacombs, which we will probably not do for a long time. But nonetheless, it's good to have. Plus, we did pick up some good souls for that. Worth noting, uh, I should get rid of my cracked round shield. It was a bad time to do it. I could have easily been ambushed there. The only reason I rested at that bonfire was essentially to replenish my uh, pyromancy. Because, of course, it's going to work very well on these guys. One fireball and one hit will be enough to take them out. Again, farming purple moss clumps, not a bad idea here. What I was going to say is that uh, if you get that 20,000 souls, you can buy an item called the Covenant of Artorius from Andre Astora the Blacksmith. Andre of Astora, not Andre Astora. It's not his last name. Uh, and then that'll open that door that's just behind us over here. And then that's a really good soul farming spot. But, you know, Dark Souls is not necessarily a game where you need to grind in order to progress. So I probably won't do that. I've never done that on any of my other characters. 
I prefer to get souls and uh, humanity even just by either invading or by cooperating with people. So I find that's a lot more fun, even though it's sometimes a little bit less reliable. But, you know, for me, if fun's the name of the game. We're playing video games here, right? So we are just going to head back to the area we were just in. Oh, I didn't even see that thing back there. First off, let's murder this guy. Try not to get killed ourselves. He attacks like exactly the same speed as my pyromancy comes out, which is a bad situation for me right now. But, again, more moss clumps. That's going to make everything so much easier in a second. Oh, this is not actually an item up here. This is the entrance to an area called Darkroot Basin, which is a little bit more high level than I would want to be right now. Uh, again, level is not always that important in, uh, in Dark Souls, but it's more in terms of your equipment, and I don't have the kind of equipment that would make me feel comfortable going into that area yet. So let's go back in here. You'll notice, if you didn't notice before, that the Titanite Demon does not respawn, and that's really good for me, because having to fight him every single time would be a huge drain on my Estus. But it would also be great if he did respawn, because then we could farm him for Demon Titanite. Now, I'm not sure if you give this Ember to Andre. Let's see. My, Apparently you do. A rare ember you have there. I've seen one of those before. It's the Ember of a Divine Blacksmith. Might you consider leaving that with me? I could produce divine weapons with a flame such as that. All right, so I'll give the divine ember to Andre. For that. You're welcome, Andre. A fine decision. You soon shall see. And let's see if I can modify. No, I can't modify any equipment into divine. Oh, I can, but I need green titanite shards, which we won't pick up until probably a little bit later. The, the funny thing is, like, I can't make my scimitar plus six because I have no large titanite shards. I can't make my uh, scimitar into a raw scimitar because I have no lightning or uh, large titanite shards. I don't have any green titanite shards. We'll be able to buy all those later for basically peanuts. Once we get to Sen's Fortress, which is, you know, maybe two, one to two areas away, uh, it's actually this area right here that you can see the doorway. It's inaccessible right now, but after we ring the second bell of awakening, that will become available. Um, we can go in there and we can basically get large titanite shards on the cheap. Pennies on the dollar. But uh, and we can buy green titanite, green titanite shards once we get to Anne Orlando, but for now, we're going to have to stick with our scimitar plus five, which is fine. Uh, a lot of people have mentioned Northern Line. You're not doing nearly as much damage as you should be doing for this part in the game. I understand that, but it's okay, because we're going to be dealing with, uh, you know, much better weapons very, very shortly. Particularly as soon as we get to Sen's Fortress, it's going to be a no-brainer, because we'll pick up the Lightning Spear, then we'll be able to really ascend our weapons once we get there into Lightning Weapons. We'll be fine, and that's only, you know, maybe four or five videos away. I can deal with the Scimitar until then. One thing I am going to do is head back to Firelink Shrine. Am I yes, I am going to head back to Firelink Shrine, because this is the next area that we are going to progress to, I suppose I should say. So, there you go. If you're, uh, you know, playing along with me, this would be a decent opportunity to kill the Moonlight Butterfly. As long as you're human and you don't mind risking that, you can go fight um, Moonlight Butterfly with the help of Witch Beatrice, who's not going to make the fight very difficult for you, honestly. She pretty much took it out without me really doing anything at all. Um, where is Petrus? I don't think I've ever been here when Petrus disappeared. Which is weird. The companions and the girl, Rhea. Yeah, that's that's normal. But I'm not sure about Petrus himself disappearing. I wanted to buy some miracles. Man, what should we do? What level are we? 22? We could use a couple more levels up. Again, a lot of people have been mentioning, man, you really gotta start leveling up strength and dexterity. I completely disagree with you. I'm gonna continue pumping pretty much all of my stats into vitality and endurance. And the reason for this, as if I have to reiterate it, is that damage is a product of your strength and sometimes your dexterity skill, but it's much more based on the actual attributes of your weapon. Let's see what Crestfallen Merchant has to say here. What's wrong? Get a bit of a scare out there? No problem. Have a seat and get comfortable. We'll both be hollow before you know it. <laughs> Guy's always such a downer. You're supposed to help me, man. What do we have down here? Firekeeper's still doing strong, can't reinforce my Estus Flask. Well then, I am actually kind of out of things to do on this episode before I go to Blight Town on the next episode. So perhaps what we should do... Ah, you know what, let's make this a little bit longer than normal. We are going to start on our way to Blight Town. 
rather have a half hour long episode than a 15 minute long episode. Now this is a shortcut that you can only take if you have the master key. If you don't have the master key, the way to get to Blight Town is to go through the depths, fight a boss called the Gaping Dragon, who, you know, you never know, I might go back and fight him a little bit later, uh, because I feel bad about leaving bosses out of the game, especially bosses that people might be having trouble with. But, uh, yeah, go through the depths, beat the Gaping Dragon, and then you'll find an entrance to the front of Blight Town, which is a nasty place, and it's a long journey from the front of Blight Town to the sewers of Blight Town, which is where we're going to be headed to. Um, but with the Master Key, what you want to do, go to Firelink Shrine. We're going to go down into an area called New Londo Ruins right here. This is a much later game area, uh, and actually this is probably my least favorite area in the game. But again, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, then we're going to look around for a second doorway, which we can take right here. And if we take the stairs up, we can use our master key to open this door. And by opening this door, we should be in an area called Valley of Drakes. Now, the Valley of Drakes is another fairly late level game area, although there is some good early game equipment that you can get here, but it will cost us our lives, so I don't want to do that. And we're just going to basically bypass this very quickly. Might come back to it later, especially when we're at New Londo, New Londo Ruins. And then we're going to enter Blight Town. And you can see that immediately things get dark and grimy, and this is pretty much the, the flavor of Blight Town, essentially. Now, what we are going to do is try to take out these fat jabronis right here. This is my fireball. It does have enough distance to get to them. These guys are pretty powerful, so I have to watch out. Uh, but we will reach a bonfire very soon, so I don't feel bad about using a lot of my pyromancy right now. If we can just take one of them out, we'll be fine. Well, we can probably get an easy backstab on that guy, or so I thought. Now, these guys also, you can see my meter filling up there. That's filling up with poison. I think one of them is nearly dead. Gotta use, like, eight fireball spells. <laughs> That's a shame. There we go. Okay, he's dead. He's stunned. Oh, God, roll backwards. Later on in the game, these guys are not going to be a problem whatsoever. It's just because I, I did skip Blight Town, so essentially I am going to like a the latest part of the early game with only early game equipment. Like I should probably ascend my scimitar a little bit more, but I could farm for large, large titanite shards here if I really wanted to. Uh, yeah, so these guys have like poison, so I really got to stay away. But they usually drop dung pie, which is is pretty disgusting. Like, how are they holding this piece of crap in their pockets, or are they? Am I reaching into their butt after they die? I don't know, but the dung pie can cure toxicity and also inflict toxicity on the enemy, I believe. Definitely inflicts toxicity on the enemy, but I believe it inflicts toxicity on you if you choose to inflict it on the enemy as well. Now, the area that we're backtracking through essentially here is a shortcut from Firelink Shrine back to Blight Town. It's the shortest way to get from point A to point B, but it's still quite long and it's also a little bit cumbersome. I really hate making this trek. I hate pretty much everything about Blight Town. I was watching some Dark Souls videos on YouTube last night uh, of Blight Town, just for entertainment, because I seriously love this game. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of people who were doing Let's Plays themselves, and they were in Blight Town, and they're just like, you know what? I'm not even going to commentate on this. They just filmed Blight Town and then just, you know, I don't know, went to go jerk off or something while, while the video played. So they didn't even commentate it. They were just like, this area sucks so much, I want nothing to do with it. And that's honestly the way I feel about it. It suffers from performance issues, and also it's the most frustrating area in the game. Uh, just into, there's not only does do those guys inflict like poison effect on you. There's little blow dart guys whose attacks you cannot fully block, and you can't even hear or see them most of the time because everything's so dark. I mean, it's a deliberate art artistic choice, but I'm still not a big fan of it. Um, and, uh, yeah, they, they inflict toxicity with their blow dart guns in, like, two seconds, and then you just die. I should actually make sure I have some blooming purple moss clumps on my quick bar here. And the other thing is we have mosquitoes that are going to follow us around, and these mosquitoes are going to do uh, poison damage as well. They're basically going to spit up blood on us, as you can see right there, and they're so hard to attack. And then, of course, these fire-breathing guys. Ain't no joke either. I'm just gonna kinda try to sneak around and then run away, basically. Pretend I am Brave Sir Robin. Oh, one second here, this is really bad timing, but my computer wanted to go through a Windows update. No thank you, I'm in the middle of going through Blight Town right now, uh, and if you reset, I would have to like <laughs> rationalize in the next video why I lost all that footage. Hey, where's the fight with the Moonlight Butterfly, Northern Lion? Oh, that uh, that didn't happen. 
Oh, now I'm toxic, so I am probably gonna die. First, let's chug an Estus. That was a blow dart guy, if you didn't see it. Then we'll use Blooming Purple Moss. Saved me. Okay, thank God. Again, really good idea to put that on my quick bar. Now I should be out of the, the danger zone when it comes to those purple moss, or the blow dart guys. Sorry if I'm not explaining this well, but I am a little bit scared. Then we're going to take this elevator, and we're very close to the uh, bonfire that we're going to stop this video at. And then in the next video, I'm not sure, there's some, there's some other stuff to show you around this area of Blight Town, uh, but then there's also a boss to fight. We should have another fight in this video as well, not just against en not just against uh, enemies, but there may be an NPC as well. Sometimes there will be NPC invasions that just happen. So we're gonna take out this Crag Spider here. I'm not sure of his actual name, but it's something similar to that. Gonna take us like a hundred hits. These guys very rarely drop anything at all. Okay, so yes, we did get invaded, but have no fear. That's not a not a an online invasion. That's just an NPC invasion. What I am going to do is run to the bonfire, or maybe not, maybe I'll just fight Mildred here. I hate doing this because there's so many mosquitoes. Basically, Mildred is this naked lady just wearing a sack on her head and carrying a butcher knife and like two pieces of wood tied together. I'm not sure why she's such a dick. Why is she invading me right here? Oh man, she actually packs a pretty serious punch. But we can just backstab her right through that shoddy wooden shield. I'll probably chug an Estus really quick just to make sure I live. Uh, don't get into the poison swamp. One thing you might have noticed already is as we walk, if we get into this swamp area, our poison meter fills up, which is horrible. Uh, poison is not as bad as toxicity, but it's still annoying as hell. You can usually Estus out of it until your poison meter uh, goes down again. Okay, fine. There we go. You're dead. We'll kill this mosquito and then we'll pick up whatever she leaves behind. I think she leaves us some extra humanity. Yeah, so we did pick up one humanity. And... Oh, three... three okay, let me explain this. <laughs> we picked up one soft humanity, which immediately took our three counter to four in the top left. And then we picked up three what I call hard humanity, which are humanity that we can crunch later to reverse hollow. So that message said Drake ahead, and I rated it up. Even though it's not 100% true, in this treasure chest we will find a dragon scale. Which is uh, an upgrade material that you use to upgrade dragon weapons. So if I had the Drake Sword right now, for example, I could use that. But there's other dragon weapons in the game that we may pick up later? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Is the Dragon Slayer Great Bow a dragon weapon? I mean, that wouldn't really make sense. But anyway, there are dragon weapons, as I've mentioned. So I should be able to light this bonfire unless I'm being invaded. Fantastic. I will rest here. I will level up a couple more times. I'm only going to be able to get two. Again, we'll do one Vitality, one Endurance, as always. And this will put us in a pretty good level range to summon some help to fight the boss that we're going to come across probably in the next video. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. In this video, we covered a little bit of Darkroot Garden, getting to the Moonlight Butterfly, summoning Witch Beatrice, and taking the shortcut from Firelink Shrine down to Blight Town, which is, you know, surprisingly cumbersome, even though I've done it something like 50 times now in my Dark Souls career. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.